2K, are y'all confused? Y'all are making me confused now. I don't know what is going on. I'm hearing so much misinformation left and right. I'm clueless. We're all technically clueless. Hey man, uh, welcome to the channel guys. Agent Zero here, hi. Uh, we upload daily on this channel, at least for the time being until I inevitably burn out. Subscribe to the channel if you wanna see that happen. I'll inevitably go on Twitter and talk about my misfortunes uh, and all the troubles in my life and all the struggles I've been going through, as if I'm not living it up anyway. Hey man, if y'all new to the channel, you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, ah, ah, ah. So let's get into it. Hey, so the game dropped and uh, it was incredibly difficult to shoot, yes. One reason was because no one had their badges, no one had their attributes, no one had really anything, hotspots, nothing. So we're kind of just waiting for not only people to test, but for NBA 2K Lab to test, we don't know much. But here's what we do know. NBA 2K Lab did their tests on hot zones and this is the graph they came up with. This year, hot zones are more important than they were in previous years. That's shown here objectively, but it's also shown in my gameplay. Yo, the second I got hot zones is when I became consistent shooting the basketball. It was automatic. So if there's one thing you wanna do to help your shot, it would be to get hot zones. Okay, that's new information. Some more new information, as NBA 2K Lab was doing their tests on their jump shots, they put out this tweet saying, we decided to pivot from testing at a 75 three point to a 80 because the script wasn't fine in green windows at 75. The percentages were also very low, 20 to 30% total make rate. This, of course, without badges, hot zones, boosts, with those things applied, you probably be able to shoot better. So when Mike Wang said, if you're hitting shots with a subpar three point shot, I'm a patch it. He might not have been playing, fellas. So we know a couple days into the game's launch, they dropped this hot fix to change the shooting sliders on lower difficulties on my team and on my career. It wasn't supposed to affect Pro-Am and Park. That's what we were told. A few days after that update went live, everybody began to know Notice a lot of differences on Park and Pro-Am. Now it's very possible that part of those were the fact that people were just getting their badges now. People were getting acclimated to the new shooting system now. True, everyone's gonna start hitting more shots as they get used to all the new things that were introduced. True, but it doesn't take a goddamn brain surgeon to figure out that shots were just dropping easier. It went from no whites hitting to a lot of whites was hitting. There was a video I was recording yesterday for four hours and it flopped, um, but so the footage is never gonna come out. But basically what happened was I was shooting with the right stick and just whites and whites and whites and so many whites, guys, and it was dropping. The shot timing would be late and it, the shot aiming would be wide left and it would drop. The fact that it would drop is preposterous. Ticino was a little bit frustrated. He put out this tweet saying, hey Baluba, nearly every white release goes in once you have shooting badges on NBA 2K21. Please fix this ASAP by requiring you to green open shots. Otherwise, it makes shooting almost 100% luck based Thank you kindly. Power put out a tweet saying shot aiming was supposed to add a skills gap, but it really just allowed people to make whites every single possession. And the whites were especially tragic on fades. Oh, everybody I've talked to was like, man, you could just fade and as long as you're open and it's kind of near, it drops. So a lot of people were kind of just sending their frustration out into the world, the devs saw it. And then information released that the next day we were gonna see an update. Now we weren't exactly told everything that was gonna be in the update, but we had a few different clues based on what uh, some of the developers were saying on Twitter. Goes as follows. Uh, NBA 2K Intel put out this tweet saying, all whites going in will be fixed in the next patch. And his DMs with Ronnie. By the way, I hate when people do this. I hate when people post DMs. This is the word to me right here, fellas. Stop doing this. But, um, you know, for the purpose of this video here, uh, it does help us out. So let's see. Ronnie, please, there are way too many whites going in with the fades. Please fix this game and issue in the park and the prime and everything. Ankle breakers don't work in this game. Please fix. He said fix in the next patch. Thank you. Now, I can't verify the legitimacy of this DM because you could always just inspect Element if you're on Google Chrome. But for the purposes of it being very broken, let's assume it's real. Uh, things began to get really real because Mitchell, who also works for 2K, put out a similar tweet saying, Hey, Ronnie, is there something you'd like to tell people that's happening tomorrow? And he, he used this very cringy, I guess any Ronnie meme technically is very cringy. This one especially, though. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, if I had to sit here and rate it, though, it'd be a 1 out of 10. Cause it's a Ronnie meme, guys. There's no way it gets over a one out of 10. That's besides the point does for a different video. And LD2K responded to one of Shakedown's concerns on Twitter by answering, ankle breakers will be addressed in the next patch, I'm told. Keep that look going though. Oh, and it's this look. Yeah, he looked like a psychopath. <laughs> So, all right, man, ankle breakers is gonna be buffed most definitely because nobody's getting ankle breakers. And on top of that, hopefully fades and all the whites is dropping is gonna be nerfed as well. Because originally, none of the modes like the park and the prime was supposed to be changed from all the shooting sliders that they changed in the hotfix. So then we waited. The next day came and then no update came, guys. And usually 2K drops patches at 11 
Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern time, right? Not always, but usually when they have news or something, that's like the time they used to drop that. So when I didn't see anything happen at 11 a.m. Eastern, I kind of just waited. Maybe it was a hot fix and not a patch because a couple of these devs said patch. So I was expecting to have to download something. And yo, the, it didn't come, guys. I don't know where this supposed patch and update is. I desperately need it. Man, I'm tired of every shot maker just fading in every imaginable direction. They don't even have to time the shots, man. They just hit them. People began to, though, discover some more stuff about shooting because there have been some badges that were significantly nerfed and some badges that were significantly buffed come NBA 2K21. And unfortunately, one of the badges that doesn't even belong in the game got a huge buff. And it's one that I experienced. It's one that plenty of people told me to equip because I refused to equip it in previous years and it's flexible release. Dnell on Twitter put out this tweet saying, y'all might laugh, but I heard flexible release is actually a good badge this year. And I heard this from a plenteous amount of people. You see, I've been working on my vocab. Even Mitchell responded saying, I've seen it pop up more this year in one week than I did all on 2K20. I'm pretty sure I'm only using it on bronze. If I get it to Hall of Fame, I'm certain I'll be, I'll be able to make it from the actual beach. <laughs> Hey, so last year, if you guys remember, NBA 2K Lab did their test and they found out that flexible release was an all right badge. Even when you max it out at Hall of Fame, it might only improve your odds by about 8%, 10%. And so it's not worth spending four badges on. Just time your shot. It was pretty easy to shoot an NBA 2K20. And as a person that has a pure sharp shooter with 30 shooting badges, it doesn't even make sense for me to not have flexible release on. It's between flexible release and hot start and one is clearly better. So if you guys remember a few days ago, I dropped a video and in one of the tweets, I was outlining some of the concerns that the MyGM My League community had. And they were frustrated by the whole roster situation. There was a whole lot of inconsistencies in the 2K roster. King of the Fourth Quarter put out a tweet saying that the 2K roster team was looking to address it. If you guys had any concerns, reach out to him. And people did. But this is why I'm saying that there's some miscommunication. Y'all don't talk to each other over at 2K. What's going on, man? Ronnie2K put out this tweet and there's a photo of some of the inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. With the 2K roster, Giannis having an 84 higher mid-range than Kawhi's 81. Okay, these are all things that we knew. Apparently, 2K already updated these things. But Ronnie put out a tweet saying, who's putting up this fake news? Law, literally nothing about this is true. So then I stopped for a moment and I was like, hmm, what are the odds that the person that put out that tweet, a huge and passionate My League, My GM supporter, was just really capping? What are the odds that Click was capping and the King of the Fourth Quarter was capping and that the whole community was just capping and Ronnie was the one telling the truth? Pretty f***ing low, right? I came to the conclusion that Ronnie is just wildly misinformed because he probably went to double check some of these things and was like, no, these are fine because they actually updated them and that's what everyone said in the responses. Freak responded to Ronnie saying, we lie? And just 66 mid-range? Here's Giannis is 84, Ronnie, and we have over 100 fields like that in this game. And he literally took a screenshot of what it was in the past. He went into uh, his attributes or whatever. Wait, wait, this is Jimmy Butler. What the f***? Stop lie. You corrected Leonard, but Giannis is certainly not an 84 and a 73 shooter. Should be 64 and 63, not more. And uh, he shows an example here of his attributes, etc., etc. Is it that hard to believe that in a pandemic, in a console jump year, a lot's going on? NBA 2K cut a lot of corners, but NBA 2K21 on current gen because they really try and get NBA 2K21 on next gen looking right. And the one mode they didn't give a single f about was this one. That seems very reasonable to me. That's exactly what happened, actually. So Ronnie, when they come with a very reasonable request considering that they had zero improvements to their game mode, all they're asking for is an update to make sure tendencies, attributes, and the badges is looking right. It's not that hard. It's actually not hard at all. Especially when they're doing the work for you. They're telling you what the inconsistencies are. It's not okay for you to just put out a tweet calling everyone cat, Ron. Ron, you've been capping so consistently here on this platform for so long. No, and he doubled down on it in his reply, by the way. Curry's block is a 50, LeBron's 64, Giannis Mid is an 84, Kawhi is a 91, Duncan Robinson's a 92, three pointer behind only Stephen Clay. And then someone responded, ha 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 ha, you just changed that today. What a joke. You see this? Wow, he really tried to lie. I just checked all this shit earlier today. Wow. <laughs> Yo, I love the 2K community, man. <laughs> Someone also responded to Ronnie with a very legitimate question of explain this one to us, Ronnie. And it's a photo in the in the 2K beach of this interesting truck, uh, lunch lady sloppy time. 
Now, there had to have been one horny developer on the art team, that's all I'm saying. Cause y'all could have put anything on that truck. And you knew what people were gonna think if you put sloppy time on that goddamn truck, man. Listen, Ron Ron, or whoever's on the art team, really, I need to know who's responsible for this, cause this is hilarious material. This is like that one time, I think it was in 2K17, where uh, they did that thing to troll LSK after he got banned. Yes, more of this, please. I really do believe that they should be adding some kind of like jam or secrets or Easter eggs into the neighborhood. Like, do something. Spice it up somehow. Besides the point though. If you've been distraught, oh my God, you can't figure out a way to shoot the shooting. There's so many changes to shooting this year, NBA 2K21. Well, Mike Wang came with the save, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because instead of doing the update that was supposed to happen yesterday, uh, we got this video from the 2K Twitter account saying, shooting tips from Mike Wang to help you get on your grind this weekend. Pray your hands emoji, which is wrong emoji to use, but we'll forgive you because you guys are probably new to social media. Uh, I need you guys to forgive me off rip, and you know, as I put up these headphones, they are broken. Welcome back to Expert Tips. I'm Mike Wang, gameplay director for NBA, holding the shot button and releasing at the peak of your jump. But for 2K21, we're introducing a new way to shoot with a pro stick that we call shot stick aiming. For jump shots, move and hold the pro stick. All right, Mike, we know this. You actually said this to us a lot of times. Now, when you're shooting with the pro stick, you won't be penalized for poorly timing your release. Huh? You can even keep the stick held until the ball hits the rim if you want. But if you want to become a great shooter... Wait, I must have misheard what he just said. ...your release. Pro stick, you won't be penalized for poorly timing your release. Mike, why did you say that? You don't mean that, right, Mike? Why would you not be why would you not be penalized for a bad timing? What's going on here? I must have misheard something though, Mike. That's not what you said out your mouth. You can even keep the stick held until the ball hits the rim if you want. But if you want to become a great shooter and know the timing of your signature jumper, you can lock in your timing and aim by either centering the pro stick or by tapping one of the triggers at the right moment. If you can time and aim your shots well, you'll see much more success shooting the ball. I have a real discrepancy here what's going on, guys. I know it's a small thing, but if you're gonna talk about hitting a perfect jump shot, why the f was the goddamn footage in the background a miss? Right moment. It was just a bad release. You time and aim your shots well. If you time and aim your shots well, as Damian Lillard clearly does here as he misses the entire goddamn window, then you'll be just fine. You'll see much more success shooting the ball. The aiming concept also applies when finishing layups. You can still hold the pro stick in any direction to start a layup, but just like jump shots, you'll want to quickly adjust the aim marker to hit the center of the target. You have to be quick, but if you master it, you'll have great touch around the rim and be able to finish tough shots. Yeah, yeah, we get it, Mike. That's how you use the shot stick. There you go, guys. You've been enlightened. In case you've been struggling out there, this two-minute infomercial from Mike Wang is breaking it down for you. Uh, I do like the idea of what they're attempting. And I genuinely believe that the only reason they're doing what they're doing right now on current gen is so that they get it right for next gen. I believe that to be the case, guys. It's gonna be the same system on next gen when it comes to finishing and shooting, I'm telling you. Mike Wang elaborated further. He put a quote tweet to that tweet from NBA 2K saying, there's a tip about the ideal aim point skewing left or right based on how fast you initially throw the pro stick. That functionality isn't in yet, but will be patched in very soon. Gives more control to the player, stay tuned. Oh, so this is absolutely a beta test for next gen. This is confirmed, guys. I was saying it a moment ago, but now I 100% believe it to be the case. And I'm all for it, guys. I don't really care. I like the system. As long as it's balanced and it doesn't give so much of a boost that it makes no sense. Because right now, when you use the right stick, really your timing doesn't matter at all. Like, at all, guys. As long as you aim it correctly, which isn't hard, your timing doesn't matter at all. What's hard to do is aim and time it properly. I mean, I feel like there'd be a skills gap to that if it was implemented properly and balanced. I'll say this, the most difficult thing about NBA 2K though is when you're game testing it, first of all, you have to be incredible at the game. And I feel like the game testers are dog, but that's besides the point. You also have to keep in mind that depending on attributes, badges, like the height of the player, the archetype, the takeover, there's so many different factors that can take a build that's balanced and make it OP or make it ass. So it is inherently difficult to test every faction of this game to make sure the game is balanced. This is a very difficult game to balance. I understand that. Which is why I'm hoping that, you know what I'm saying, Mike Wayne, don't do too much disco tech with it, you know what I'm saying? Don't ruin the game for everybody out there, but just do enough so that the game makes sense. Have a good little, you know, in between. Here's balance, here's fun. Find the middle right here. That's really all your job is. And I also believe, guys, that Mike Wang has nothing to do with uh, 
current gen. I just believe the only reason he's getting involved here is because he has to do with next gen and this system is also going to be next gen. Hey, uh, NBA 2K. So, uh, first things first, you feel me? Hey, apologize to the My League, My Jam guys. They're struggling out there. They're distraught about the fact that their game mode somehow got worse on an upgraded year. You feel me? Like, that's not usually how things are supposed to work. Things are usually supposed to move in the direction of progress. Second thing, uh, that update that we talked about is supposed to drop yesterday, we don't know where it is. So if at any point we can get an update about the update in the patch, we'd appreciate that. I'm assuming what happened was Sony or Microsoft had to like hold it back because you know like you have to approve a patch and uh, there's a process to that thing, you feel me? And the game's only been out for about a week. So I'm assuming that's what went wrong, but I could be wrong about that too. And last but not least, I need an explanation for that truck in the neighborhood, man. I really do. For me at least, standing shoot, standing shots, yeah, for a pure sharp, too many whites go in. I wish it was more greens. I wish, just a little bit, especially on Prime. I've been on 3v3 Prime more than anything. But hey man, for what it's worth, I barely played 2K20. I'm genuinely having a decent time on 2K21. I haven't been on the neighborhood though. I've really been playing 3v3 Prime. I don't know if I should be concerned about that or not, but I've heard the servers on the park have been absolute garbanzo. So I refuse to put myself through that type of mental misery, especially knowing that there's a good experience on 3v3 Prime where I don't have to do that. Well, that's it for the videos, guys. There's videos on the screen right now. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. We do daily uploads here, uh, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.